All right, welcome back, Photoshoppers. Um, so today I'm going to quickly walk you through on how to do a very simple, but yet elegant and amazing looking flyer like this. So um, I just quickly did this one. We might be doing something. We will be doing something obviously way better than that. But I would like you to ask me questions in the comment section if you have any. And if you will only have any questions, I would like you to download the practice files. I'll keep a link to that in the description so you can follow through and try to have exactly what we have. So go ahead and download it. Download all the practice files and uh, try to do exactly what we have done. All right? So I want to believe that you've taken some time to download the files. So I'm going to quickly create a new canvas. Right? So this is a social media flyer. And um, the size, the standard size is 4x4. Four by four. By four, what I mean by 4x4 four by four is the width will be 4 and the height will be 4. So I'm going to go to 5 and I'm going to go to new. And I'm going to go to where I have width and height. Right? And uh, um, the unit is in, is in inches. Right? So we have the two inches. And I change the width to 4 or change the height to 4. The resolution should be in 300. Um, yeah. By default, you should have 8 bit, but I prefer to use 16 bit. If you want to know why, ask me in the comment section. Um, I'm going to click on create to have a blank canvas. And I always like to have margins because if I go back to the previous one that I did, I'm going to press Ctrl H on my keyboard. Just so you can see the margins on the screen. Now, what this allow me, or what this helps me to do, is for me to have spaces on every side, right? Equal spaces at the top, um, on the left, on the right, and at the bottom. So I have equal spaces all through. It is uh, you can liken it to a Microsoft Word document where you cannot type past some certain um, portions of the screen. Right. What that helps you to do is that it helps you to keep the sheet clean, you know, so we don't have text running all the way from the edge on the from the edge of the left hand side, you know, all the way to the right. We just have that, you know, clean look. You can see the exclusive here. It is not getting past the margin. Open to four seven. It is not getting past this margin. Bobbin Salon. It is not getting past this line. Of course, the images can break the row, but for the text, it just it just helps us, you know, keep everything within the box. I'm using Photoshop 2023, and uh, it should be the same if you're using 20 from 2019 upwards. I'm not mistaken. How do we create that margin? I'm going to go to uh, View. I'll go to Guide, and I'll go to New Guide Layout. All right, and um, I'm just going to click on margin so just in case you have something like column and rows right go ahead and you know untick all of those and I'm going to set mine to margin and I'm going to use 50 pixels for the row so I'm using 50 at the top I'm using 50 on the left hand side 50 on the bottom and 50 on the right you can set the colors that you want but that is not that is not a big deal so I'm going, I'm going to click OK and um, I have the margin I just talked about. Alright. So open your practice files. What we are going to do is um, I have all of these images here for background. And um, yes, this is all we'll be using. These are the images. But all of this you can pick anyone that you want to use for your background. And I'm going to show you what I did here. Let me go back to my background layer. And you see, these are all the images I use. Right? All I was just doing was to blend them. So what I'm going to do, I'll go back to my layer. I'm just going to bring in anyone, right? Anyone at all. I'm going to bring in this one first, white brush. I'll dump it on, on the canvas, wait for it to load. I'm going to stretch it so you can feel the whole, you know, the whole screen. I'm going to leave it there. I'll go back to where I have my images and I'm going to bring this crumpled white paper ground. I drop it there. Right. 
I could have easily used one background, but I just want to teach you guys how to use multiple images and um, use blending to blend them all together. Now, if you understand how the Photoshop layers panel work, you see because this one is above this one, we are no more seeing this very one again. Right? What I mean is, if I hide this crumpled white paper background, now we are able to see this one. It's just like an onion. In order for you to see the second layer, you have to peel off the first layer and then we get to the second layer. That's how we get to the third layer. That's how we get to the fourth layer. And that's how we are able to see the last layer. Right? The same thing works with Photoshop. You see, it is called layers here. Um, crumpled white paper, paper board will be on top of this one. And we will not be able to see this one because this one is on top of this one. If I hide it again, you'll be able to see this one below. But what I want to do is to blend it. So I'll kind of like have a blend of the two of them. The blend option is right here. There's no magic formula to this. I'm just, you know, going through the options to see what works best. Um, I can quickly see that darken, you know, kind of give me that blend that I want. Um, I can see the lines already. If I could just use my hand to show you. But I can see the lines somewhere around here from the previous background I would have. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to go back here, take this texture background to make it look a bit dark, and I'm going to dump it there as well. Increase the size. All right. And uh, I'm going to go to my blending options again, and I'm going to kind of blend it together. So like I said, there's no magic formula. And uh, I think the soft light works best. Let me see. I'll stick to soft light. So I'm going to bring in one more layer. Which one? Which one? This one, right? I'm going to bring in this one. And uh, I'm going to stretch it across. And I'm going to look for blending option again. So let's say, let's see, let's see, colorbone, right? I think multiply is giving me that dark effect. And I'll stick to multiply. So what I really want is for me to have, you know, I want it to be a bit darkened. So I'm going to go to my adjustment, right? And now if you're not seeing your adjustments um, panel, you go all the way to window, window, yeah, and then you look for adjustments. That's right here, click on adjustment. Mine was there already, so by me clicking it, I just remove it. So click on adjustment and you have your adjustment, right? So I'm going to go to, um, let me see which one should I use. I'm going to use the curves. So what curves helps me to do is I can increase the bright side or the dark side, right? So if I bring this down, See, I'm making it darker. And if I, this, this, this side represents the dark side and this, uh, like I'm literally reducing the light. Alright, uh, I'm just trying to see if I can get what I want. Uh, notation on YouTube is not that easy as to think physically. I have physical student that I teach and you know <laughs> uh, on YouTube you just try to make everything like like perfect. You know what I mean? Like you just try not to make mistakes because you can easily edit your mistakes. So everyone is trying to, you know, keep it all cool on YouTube. But you know, I'm just giving you that for heads up. It's not as easy as sitting in a physical class. I'm going to go to levels and uh, let's see what I have here. I'm going to reduce the lights. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. I just want to have that dark background. So I'm reducing the light. So I'll have those textures pop up. Yeah, that is all. Bring this up back a bit. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'll click on the levels. I'll hold shift on my keyboard and then I'll click on. Um, you know, the last layer right here. So select everything. I'll press Ctrl and G so that I can group everything. And I'll just call it background. 
for short BG. Alright. So what I will do next is for me to bring in this guy. I'm just gonna drag him and drop him right here. Somewhere in the corner. Somewhere in the corner. So if you're an artist, like you sing a song, that can be some title for you, somewhere in the corner. Alright? So if any of you gets to you know send a song and call you somewhere in the corner, please give credits to me. Alright, so we have this guy somewhere in the corner. And um we're gonna bring in the barber tools. Drop it somewhere like there. I'm gonna bring it again. Somewhere here. Uh, uh, so remember what I said earlier on, give an example for the onion. This power tools is above this guy because on the layers panel it is above the guy. If I bring if I drag him up above the bubble tools, you see the tools will go behind and um he will be informed. It's kind of like if you're used to if you use Microsoft Word and you know you use the send to back, bring forward uh, option, that's exactly what happens here. So I'm just going to adjust this. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to draw two shapes. Basically, I'm going to draw one and just duplicate it. So I'm going to draw a perfect circle, right? I'm holding down sh um, Shift and Option. And the alt, right? I'm going to down shift and alt so that I can draw this shape perfectly. There we go. I'm going to give it a fill of any color, right? And I'm going to take out the stroke. So, what I want to do is I just want to duplicate this. So I'm going to duplicate it like this. And on the first one, I'm going to bring in the first image. Which is this guy with a cool looking hairstyle? I'm just resizing it, and he has to be above the layer that you want to power clip. You know, power clip with um, power clip, right? It's what's it called? Color draw. That's the term they use for color draw. But then in Photoshop, it's called a clipping mask. So. I'm going to clip it inside the circle. In order for me to achieve that, I have to place him above the circle on the layers panel. I'm sure you get that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my Alt, Alt key, and then you would see this arrow that I have here. I'm going to zoom in through it so you see it closely, and then just press. I'll just clip, right? So I just you know that's how you literally insert an image inside a shape, any shape at all. So I'm gonna click on the second shape and bring in the second image. Grab him and leave him there. It's quite big. I'm going to resize it. And I'm going to hold down my alt again and then click here and I'll just fit in there. So what I want to do, since I have this and this, on um this is, is clipped into this and this one is clipped into this one, I'm going to group them, right? I'll click on this, hold shift, click on the second one and control and G to group it, right? So I'm gonna call it in drawing. I'm going to do the same for this one. Call it image two. I'm going to call this a hero. So I have like the main image. I'm going to call this power tool. Uh, so what I want to do, I want to increase this image because. Going to do just that. Uh, 
right? I'm going to do the same for image one and image two. You know, click on the first one, hold shift, click on the second one, and I'm just going to increase the size. So you might have to reduce the speed of your, you know, the, the rate at which your video plays. Uh, I'm sorry because naturally I talk fast. Why I'm saying that is because if you, you know, feel like I'm too, I'm going too fast, you know, this is not like a one-on-one -on -one session where, um, you will bring it to my notice that, hey, you're going too fast and I'll slow down. But it comes to my mind sometimes that if you talk too fast, you have to slow down. But, um, just in case you think I'm going too fast, please slow down your, your rate at which your video plays. And I'm sorry for that. So the next thing to do is, I'm just going to position this somehow, right here. Oops, 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 sorry about that. Alright, so, um, what next, what next, what next? I'm going to increase the size of this again. And I want to just add drop shadows to, you know, to this. So I'll just cast some shadows there. I'm going to click on it. Go to blending options. Wait for it to load and then I'll go to drop shadow. You can see the drop shadow there. This is how, this is the opacity. All right. And this is the distance you want it to go from the main subject, from the, you know, the stop itself. We need the shape, we need an image. This is the spread. And this is the size. So there's no, there's no, you know, abracadabra magic formula thing here. You just play around with the sliders and see the one that works best for you. You are the designer, you know, you know what you want. Right, so I'm not gonna say, oh, there's a perfect number. It has to be opacity, it has to be this number, the distance has to be this number, the spread and the size has to be this number. And this is just you dragging the sliders and finding out what works for you. Alright, so well, I think I'm okay with this. I'm gonna press OK. So I have a drop shadow here, but I don't have a drop shadow on this guy. So what I'll do, I'll go to image one. You see the FX here, right? Now there are two ways to do this. There are two ways to do this. I can either hold down my um, Alt, click on the FX, right? Click on it and drag it to image two. And you can see I have a drop shadow on image two. Or let me press Ctrl Z and I'm sure we all know that shortcut. I'll right click on image one. I'll copy layer style. Click on image two right click and I'll click layer style. So those are the two options you can use. You can either choose to hold the Alt, drag it and drop it there, or just right click, copy and then click on text. So the next thing we have to do is to add the text. So Open twenty four twenty four seven. Just in case you're wondering what twenty four seven means, I used to wonder what it meant as well. Until some point, I got to realize it meant um twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah, basically that's what twenty four seven means. Right, uh, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. So they are open. Like literally every day, every time, every minute. Whenever you go there, they're open for work. The last year's business people. Um I'm just gonna make it bold. Um, let's see. Bold so you can see it. Alright. And um, I'm gonna copy the layer style also to it. You know, the layer style we created for this, that's the top side. And um, I think for this, let's go edit it more. I just double click on the drop shadow that I had there. And I'm going to increase the opacity. Right? And I'll reduce the distance a bit. So it's really close to the top. Something like that. I press the top like that. So the exclusive, what I'll do is, um, 
So just in case you're wondering what I did there, just to duplicate something, just like I showed you with the FX, hold down the Alt key, click on the open. Don't leave the Alt key down, hold down the Alt key, click on the open and drag it over. So that's one way you can duplicate it. Another way, let me press Ctrl Z, is to click on this, right, and press Ctrl and J. So you can see over on the layers panel. I have a copy of it. So the two ways you can choose to hold down the Alt key, you drag over, or you press Ctrl and do and then duplicate. All right, so I'm gonna do that again. Ctrl J. You see, I have two copies now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write uh, X. All right, X. Make it big. X. Make it big. And. Um, I'm going to duplicate this. I just showed you how to do that. Hold on the Alt and drag over. Alright. I'm gonna write first. Let's close it. I hope this is spelling. Yeah, this is spelling. Let's close it. I'm going to resize it. Alright. So what I want to do, I'll click on this, I'll click on this. I clicked on the S, I held down my shift and I click on the close it. What I just want to do is just to align it properly. I'll align it. Uh, just go align. And I'm going to drag this to create. So I'm repeating the process. Control G to group the X and the closer. Remember, they are on two different layers, right? So we want them to be together. And um, you might be having problems, and I wouldn't really know because, like we both know, this is not like a one-on-one -on -one physical class. I would like you to ask me questions in the comment section if you are having any problems, right? Ask me the questions you might have. Ask let me know the challenges that you're facing. That is that is the way we learn, right? YouTube is there for all of us to share ideas. If you have a problem, drop it in the comment section. And um, if someone else knows the answer, they can just tell you. Don't keep the, the questions to yourself, right? And the last thing is just to write about this alone. So I'm going to write problem. Going to increase the size. This tutorial will really be useful to those that please have an idea on Photoshop already, right? To those that can you know use Photoshop that are familiar with the tools. Because as you can see, I'm not really doing a lot of explaining as to what this tool does, how to go about with the tools, because I'm just um I'm just hoping that those that are watching are those that you know are familiar with the environment already. But for those that are not familiar with the Photoshop environment, uh, I still believe you can still pick up one or two from this from this tutorial. So it is not a waste. So I'm just adjusting my text and I'm going to do the same thing like I said earlier on to duplicate this text. I hold on shift, drag it down, and then I'm gonna Put my salon there. I'm salon, and I'm going to reduce the size. Let me find it here. Right. So um, I would simply let's see, let's see, let's group this image one and image two. Group it. Let's call it images. Uh, so we can move the two of them together at one time. Uh, so I will, you know, duplicate or copy this FX, which is the drop shadow, to the bottom. And we'll have a drop shadow there. I'll do the same for Salon, so we can see it. We also have a drop shadow there. Alright, so that is it for this tutorial. I know it was very simple. But uh, yeah, that is how you can create an amazing flyer in uh, a short amount or a little amount of time. One more thing, one more thing before we leave. I would like you guys to
consider subscribing to my channel. Um, you know, I put in a lot of time doing these videos and these tutorials, and just like any YouTuber, I also want to grow grow my channel. You know, because that is one way you reach your success on anything you do. Um, I would really appreciate if you guys can like, you know, um, give me a thumbs up, and um, subscribe, and you know, give me a comment. I would I would love to read them, and also download the resources. They are free. You don't have to pay anything. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next tutorial.